Hey everyone, my name is Kirk Fedora. Today, I'll be showing you how to make a notification system in Roblox Studio. And during the video, I will show you how everything works step by step. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So once you're fully loaded into your game, we're going to be making a remote event called Send Message, which we're going to put it in the replicated storage. So once you got everything set up, let's go to the start of GUI, make a screen GUI, and name it Main GUI. Once you're done, you're going to make a text label and name it message. And once you did all of that, it should look like this so far. So let's go ahead and edit our label. So first, select your label and set the anchor point to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then change the position of the label to 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.9, 0. Once you mess around with the labels, this is what my label is going to look like for now. So let's go ahead and start scripting. So let's go to start a player, start a character scripts, and make a local script. So in this script, we're going to get the said message, which is in the replicated storage, and we're going to get the local player. So I'm going to make two variables, which is equal to the said message event, and I'm going to make another variable, which is for the local player. So once you're done with the code, we're going to make a function whenever the send message is triggered. So what we just coded, we made a code whenever the send message event is triggered. And we made a new variable which is called message will be the exact message so what the notification would say. So once the send message variable is triggered, we're going to make a variable called main GUI, which can be found in the player GUI. Then we're going to make a variable called label, which is inside the main GUI. Now we're going to change the label to the text, whatever the message says. We can easily make that code by setting the text to whatever message we put. But before we go ahead and test, we're going to go to the server script service and add a script. A remote event can't function without a script, so we're going to go ahead and make one. And just like the code that we did on the other script, let's go ahead and make a variable for the send message event. And now we're going to make a new function whenever we want the server to send a notification. So what we did is that we named the function called send and we made a new variable which is called message for the send message event. Once you coded that, we need to make a function so it functions for all players. And in case you saw my latest video, you should probably know what this is. So after the function starts, then it gathers up everybody that's in the game. We're going to make a code so the send message event triggers to everybody in the game. So in the code I just made, we made it so the send function is triggered and what's inside the function is v and message which is going to be printed to the local script. v is going to be the exact player that we're sending it to and the message is just the message. And now let's go ahead and see if this fully works. And as you can see, the text hasn't really changed. We can easily fix this by making a repeat code so it waits until the player GUI is actually there. And for the script, we can make a wait code so it waits a certain amount of seconds for the player to load in. So let's go ahead and retest our project again. And as you can see, the text finally changed. But we need to make it so the text appears and disappears. But we can do that with only one solution. Tween service. So let's go ahead and make a variable for the tween service. And once you got that done, let's make a new variable called tween info. So what this does is that it will send all the information to the tween service, which will change any object. I know the code in the tween info is a lot, but let's break it down. 
The number 3 symbolizes the amount of seconds. The Eason style quad will expand anything by the power of 2. The Eason direction called in out will speed up the process and start to slow down a bit. The 0 means how many times we're going to repeat the process and we want the process to reverse so we put true. So once we got all the information the last thing that we need is the property for the label that we're going to animate. So we're going to make a table for this one because we're going to use multiple things. And we're going to space out the properties and we're going to change the size for this one. We're going to use a code that autumn2.new is because a text label size has a scale in offset, which is why we're going to use autumn2.new for this one. But before we test, we need to make sure that the label changes size whenever the send message is triggered. So we're going to make a new variable called tween, which we need this to actually animate the label. So the reason why I added label in the beginning is because the label is the one that we're going to change. So we added the tween info and the tween properties to make sure that the tween knows what they're animating. And of course, you have to add play because how else are we going to animate? Now let's go ahead and test to see if this works. And as you guys can see, you can see that the text has finally changed color and it sets the text to the exact message that we wanted to. Make sure to like and subscribe and this is my third ever tutorial on YouTube. So if you want to see more, drop a like and I'll see you guys in the next video.